Hi, my name is Rob, and I'm an automotive idiot. I have a Jeep. And for those of you that don't know, Jeep is said to stand for just empty every pocket. I realized this when I got into the Jeep lifestyle. I enjoy my Jeep a lot. I like doing upgrades on my Jeep. Thus, I have invested a lot of money in my Jeep. But I enjoy going off-road. I've been to Moab. I've been to the San Juans. I've done lots of stuff in my Jeep. I've broken parts, and that's part of the fun. However, once in a while, something fails on your Jeep that makes you realize it's an automobile. Normal maintenance items can come up. The other day, I took a beer run to my local brewery. Oh, so tasty. Got home and saw a puddle spreading on the floor underneath the Jeep. Realizing it wasn't a fine Pilsner, it was antifreeze. I put the vehicle up on a lift and I looked. I traced the fluid up behind the water pump pulley. That's usually a really clear sign you've got a water pump, water pump issue. And they put a small weep hole into the cast of the water pump where fluid can escape when the seal on the impeller shaft starts to fail. This is a clear indicator that it's time to replace your water pump. Uh, it won't be much longer before things get much worse, so take care of it as soon as you see coolant coming out of that weep hole. Anyway, I'm not a professional mechanic, but I am really good at swear words. So follow along and let's see if we can replace the water pump on a 4 liter 2004 Jeep TJ Unlimited. This is my Jeep. As you can see, it's the uh, unlimited model, so it's a slightly longer wheelbase, running on 35-inch tires, 4-liter automatic, blah, 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 goodies and bits. Let's open the hood and see what we're messing with today. Yep, there it is, Jeep 4-liter engine. In my opinion, the last great Jeep engine. Nothing can beat the torque characteristics of a straight-six engine design. Apparently, the water pump is still subject to fail. There's not much light in here, we'll rectify that, but somewhere down in that dark abyss is a water pump. These things are great! There's evidence of the coolant on the bottom of the oil pan. And you can see it goes up behind the damper and the crank pulley. There's a little bit of evidence of it behind the idler pulley. You see that stain. Unfortunately, it's really super hard to see behind the uh, water pump pulley. It's up there with that big nut shaped, and that nut is the clutch fan, fan clutch, whatever. So, obviously, this is kind of dry right now. It's been sitting for a couple of weeks. I haven't been able to get to it. We're going to get to it today. However, this is where the coolant was dripping down the pan, onto the bottom, and from there <whistles> to the floor. Okay, so first thing we have to do is drain the coolant out of the system. If you look at the bottom of the radiator on the passenger side, you'll find this little petcock. And all you do is you loosen this. Oops, there we go. Okay, and as that loosens up, you can probably turn it by hand. There we go. Uh, there we are. I'm draining it into my drain pan. Something I like to do so I can turn up the flow, so I can put a little piece of hose on here. And it'll help direct things a little better. I can really open it up and let it go. Maybe. There we go. While I'm under here, I think I'm going to go ahead and loosen up the lower radiator hose with the factory clamp here. Just because this hose goes up to the water pump. And I think once I get working on top, I may need to loosen this anyway or take it off. And so if I just take the clamp off now, I think I'll save myself time later, he says optimistically. Let's give it a squeeze. And work it back, get it off the neck of the radiator. There we go. So if I have to get that off in a bit, I can just give it a twist and it should break free. So the next thing we got to do is get the uh, 
fan off so we can get the shroud off. Now the fan clutch, you can see, let's move the wrench, is that nut right there. It's right behind the fan in front of the pulley for the water pump. What you got to do is get your metric crescent wrench. No other crescent wrench will work. It has to be metric. As you can see that's clearly marked in metric. Get the biggest one you got. It doesn't have to be metric. Put it on the pulley. And this is typical, or not typical, sometimes uh, they have reverse threads on these, but Jeep is uh, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. So turn this thing counterclockwise. What you're going to find, probably, if you haven't had this off before, is this. Oh, look at that. Everything's moving. So that nut is usually very secure, and it's not going to come off. The belt tension isn't going to hold it enough. Now, if you've had your water pump or your fan or fan clutch off recently, you might. But this has been on here a while, and you're going to find that it's stuck. There's lots of different ways to go at it now. You can try to heat it up. You can try to bang on it. Uh, I think what I'm going to try to do is see if I can find a way to uh, hold the engine from rotating and get some leverage on the wrench and see if I can pop that thing loose, maybe with a hammer or something. Uh, I don't know. Let's break some stuff. Okay, so the hub of the fan clutch isn't coming off easily. Um, I've tried to wrench. I've tried beating on it a little bit. Tried heating it a tiny bit. So I think I'm going to go over to um, the parts store and see if they have a loaner tool to span the water pump pulley hub nuts and see if I can jam it and hold it with that so I can put my big wrench on it. So, first trip to the parts store. A few moments later. Hey, a trip to my local O'Reilly's Auto Parts. OO O'Reilly's. Copyright 2019, O'Reilly's Incorporated. Has brought me this adjustable fan clutch holding tool. They have a free loaner tool program. So, hopefully, this will do the trick and cost me nothing. This is the device. As you can see, we line up a couple of bolts on the pulley with these claws and then use the leverage to hold the water pump pulley so that we can then put a wrench on the fan clutch and hopefully loosen it. Let's see if this works. Okay, I removed two of the uh, stock bolts to the water pump hub on the fan pulley found a couple of longer ones of the same thread in my uh, my bolt box and stuck those in, threaded them in about uh, half an inch. So hopefully that'll give me enough of a shank to grab onto with this tool. So let me see if I can get the claws on those bolt heads now to hold the pulley. The tool looks like I've got it hooked on those two stud heads now. The handle's way out here, so hopefully it'll give me the leverage. And now we bring our infinity 16th wrench into play. Get that thing back onto the hub. All right, success. So I was able to hold it with the tool, the loaner tool. And now that thing broke free, and there it is, it's spinning now. Oh cool, it's just spinning off of the, the nut. There's four bolts that hold the fan shroud on, two down below, two up top. I already took off one down below on the passenger side. The driver's side is a little tighter to get to. I think the easiest way to get to it is to remove the overflow tank, which they're uh, pretty easy. There's a little nipple in the bottle right down here in the bracket. I just slipped a uh, four-blade screwdriver in here, pried a little bit, 
and then pulled up on the container and it came right out. Unhook the uh, hose, of course, from the radiate overflow and set that sucker aside. And now I've got pretty good access to that lower bolt. Easy peasy. All right, now we can get a good look at our water pump. What we're going to do, so I'm going to take off these uh, other two hub bolts, disconnect the uh, radiator hose here, the clamp that's on the right. Can't quite see in the camera. And what else do I got here? Oh, I'm sure there'll be more surprises and fun. Let's take the belt off. Taking off the belt isn't real hard. You've probably done it before. You find the tensioner down here and you see that square hole? That's a half inch drive hole. So you just put your half inch breaker bar into that so that you can pull the spring loaded mechanism back and it lets you slip the belt right off. Now it's also a good time to check the health of your uh, your pulleys. That one seems really rough. It's way too free spinning. That one's not much better. I actually went ahead and purchased a new one of these, figuring I'd do it while I was in here, but... All right, that got them loose. I am all that is man. All right, let's try this. There we go. Did the trick. Okay, I got myself a new AC Delco water pump, a genuine water pump gasket. There's our thread on shaft for the hub of the uh, fan clutch. So it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five bolts holding this to the engine. It's a good looking pump. They did a nice work on the machining of the nipple. Feels good. Always check your parts before you install them. That's nice and it's got a nice tight feel to the seal, but yet you can tell it's free spinning. No pits. Mounting surface all looks pretty clean and pretty good. Remember earlier when I loosened the lower um, radiator hose clamp? Yeah, it looks like that's going to have to come off as we thought it would. Got it. Oop. Yeah. So there's still coolant in the bottom. So let me throw a drain pan under there. All right, let's try this again. I can control it a little bit. Try to keep the mess to a minimum. Just found another uh, clamp to remove. This is the uh, heater hose that comes from the firewall along the side of the engine to a metal pipe that goes down into the uh, water pump. And I think it's going to be easiest to pull a water pump with that 
in place. There she is. Now of her dirty glory. I've got it all in the uh, vise ready to work on the pipe and I was looking at the uh, the impeller on the back of this pump. It's plastic. Plastic people. I don't know if this is the original water pump or not, but plastic. The Stacy Delco, that is metal. It is a cast metal impeller. Cleaning is important. I'm starting to wipe some of this down. It's a good idea to stuff a towel or a rag inside the uh, water jacket so you can catch the biggest pieces that are bound to wind up in there. Uh, but this old gasket is baked on. I'm pretty sure that was the original water pump. Uh, get yourself a quality implement like this. This is a gasket scraper. It's got a little bit of a sharp edge to it. You can really work around and scrape so it's really stuck to the block so it's going to take a while to clean this one off 20 minutes later I use the gasket scraper a little bit of a carburetor cleaner wire wheel more gasket scraper more carb cleaner more wire wheel that gasket was I've, I've had gaskets stuck on worse than that but I can't remember when really thin coat doesn't take a whole lot. You just want enough to fill in any imperfections on the cast and uh, any crap you may have left inadvertently. And also to kind of stick the gasket in place. Now the gasket. Now yeah, let's see here. One bolt is long, you've got one long bolt, and it goes in the top position. The other four positions are the same length, shorter bolts. Yeah. <laughs> Fresh one. Wait, hold on. Oh, there's a little there. Oh, that's a good one there. Yeah! But how you know you're really doing it right? It's on the... Uh, on the hub of the water pump, yeah. All right, it's good and tight, spinning free. No obstructions or contact. Bottom one spinning free. Okay, let's put on the water pump pulley. So let's go and get the belt on. Seems to have it. Take a look and make sure you upset. Yeah, on my, uh, my AC compressor, I don't have the uh, ribs in the groove, so I'm gonna have to loosen it again. OK, 
Okay, all the ribs are in grooves. All the smooth sides are on smooth things. I think that's a win. It just occurred to me, I might have to take two of those bolts out. Yep. I can't tighten this thing for the same reasons I couldn't take it off. So I'm going to have to back up two of those bolts so I can put my long ones in so I can use that spanner to hold it to tighten it. Okay, fan shroud's in. Let's get the overflow bottle back. So I looked online and the specs call for this GO5 formula coolant in the TJ. I don't know what that means. I do know that this stuff costs way too much money. It was like 17 or 18 bucks for the gallon of concentrate at the parts store. Maybe it's got magic unicorn juice in it or something. I have no idea, but I thought I'd better go back with what it calls. The cooling system holds a little over 10 quarts? Yes. So I'm gonna take that on faith. I'm gonna throw in a whole four quarts of concentrate first, and then I'll throw in four quarts of water. And then we'll see where that leaves us. So now I know what you're thinking. Let's throw some water in there. We're good to go. Let's get on down to the to the, uh, to the brewery before it closes. Well, if you're one of those hillbillies that just wants to throw a garden hose in your radiator and top her up and hit the road, go for it. There's a lot of impurities in water, though, and your cooling system is constantly heating and cooling, and it precipitates all of the contaminants out of the tap water into your cooling system. So don't be a cheapskate. Pick up a couple gallons of distilled water at your neighborhood Wally World. I think it's like 80 or 90 cents a gallon. And it's a lot better for your cooling system. And really, after spending more money than my wife needs to know about on this repair, another couple of bucks on distilled water really isn't going to make the difference. I think I'm going to let it run up the temperature, see where we're at. The good news is, so far, no leaks because I'm that good of a mechanic. Okay, it's up to temperature. It's been running for about 10 minutes. Uh, let's take a look, make sure that there's no leaks or anything. Needs to be good. I've got a hell of a mess on the floor to clean up. Let's take it for a test drive and I'll uh, take the tool that I borrowed back to Oceanigans or whatever that parts store is. Job well done. Hey, if you uh, like what you saw, let me know. 
if uh, you take any sort of issue with anything I did. I'm an automotive idiot. I don't know. Tell me what you think down below.